today I'm going to do a tutorial on Ether SX2 for Switch. Um, so first things first, you have to have a modded Switch with Android installed, and you have to find Ether SX2 from the Play Store. If if it is not available on your Play Store, then you will have to go to Google and search for an APK file of Ether SX2. So this update is actually released on the 7th of January. With this update, we can see many improvements in the graphic and in the whole performance. You can find some more footages uh, for the gaming performance after this tutorial. With that being said, let's start our tutorial. If you have the Ether SX2 installed on your Switch already, please make sure that you have saved your game in-game because your save states will not work. Now go to App Settings from the left and here are some general settings that I'm using. I noticed that the settings that I've been using in the previous version is no longer suit my games in this update. So I have made some changes and you can uh, take a look uh, according to what I'm showing you on the screen. Make sure you have set your EE cycle rate to 100 and the EE cycle skip to the maximum and then set these to available as well. I have made the normal speed to 115% and I think that gives me a better performance. At least it feels like it is smoother than uh, using 100%. Here are some settings for the graphics. I didn't change much. However, I want to mention that I'm using Vulkan as my core. In this update, we can see some improvements uh, with using this Vulkan uh, rather than using OpenGL. So I chose to use Vulkan and I am using binary upscaling as well. Um, didn't change much for the others. And let's move on to the audio tab. Make sure you have the same settings at, as me because uh, this is very important to prevent any sh uh, shuttering in the audio. Now let's move on to my advanced tab. Here are my settings. Uh, you can take it as your reference. I think this is the optimized setting for the switch already so make sure you follow that since this update we have one more new tab we have a controller settings option so first of all we can uh, disable the um, on-screen display of buttons and we can make sure we are using the port one for this button if you want to choose it also, we can have the freedom to map our keys one by one so we don't have to use that really um, weird settings for like reverse the button so on. So here I just uh, map every key um, in this video so you can follow it or you can simply map the keys you want but I don't think you will change anything other than my settings because that would be the most common settings and you can use some um, hotkeys uh, for your settings as well uh, for me I'm not going to use any hotkeys so I will leave this um, blank as it was used to be so that's basically what we have to do before uh, playing the games. Also, in order to play the games, you have to import your own BIOS and you have to have your own BIOS. So I can't provide that for you. I'm sorry for that. Moreover, you can see that there is no box cover for any game here. So you can uh, choose your own picture uh, from your files and uh, I don't have any correct picture here, but I will just choose a random one to show you the process. After picking choose cover, you can go to your files and pick a picture 
um, for your uh, game uh, as your box cover. It may simply go black like this, so you can uh, leave the app and uh, enter it again. Then you'll see an updated box cover. Occasionally, uh, you will still experience some kind of slowdowns like here. Check settings that you can use to get you uh, get you out from this symptom. However, it doesn't work for every game, so you have to check whether the game is suitable to disable this option or to enable it. Go to the menu by pressing the back button and go to the um, system tab. Then enable the mid thread GUI and you can see there is a drastic improvement in the speed of running and uh, crawling on the ground. This option works for three out of five of my games. Uh, the other two games didn't work because um, the whole thing uh, wasn't performing very good on Switch. By that, I mean the games were too heavy for a Switch to handle, so uh, there was there were no there was no change um, after enabling or disabling this option. So that's the end of this tutorial, and the left of the video will be some footage of the gameplays. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe to this channel if you think that this channel helps you. Bye! Although Dragon Ball is still not running good on Switch, we can see that there is a big improvement from the last update. Uh, the graphics are rendered correctly. We do not have that uh, whole white background or uh, the flickering anymore. Um, still, the speed is uh, slow, so I don't think it is that playable. But at least I was able to kind of fight the enemy. And if you compare to my last video about uh, some gameplays uh, uh, with this emulator, you can see that it has uh, improved a lot since the last time. So I am still looking forward to the future development of this emulator as well as uh, some improvement in the uh, Android port for Switch. So I think if these two are working well, we will be able to play a lot better for our PS2 emulation on Switch. Mm-hmm.